You know, I had this realization the other day in that, you know, I know that it's got a bunch of, like, terrible, rotten tomatoes reviews as far as the movie is concerned, but I, I, I really think that the rotten tomatoes reviews of the movie are based on, you know, the incomplete version that was released by uh, the studios that dicked around in the production of the particular thing. So, you know, their review doesn't really quite count, you know, because what I did is I, I tracked down like the, the, the reconstructed version of, uh, you know, disturbing behavior that had, you know, been edited on the pirate bay with all of its deleted scenes that they could actually find added back into the damn thing. And, you know, it, it becomes a, a, a bit of a longer movie as a result that explains a bit of the backstory. And, and, you know, particularly I think right around the, the janitor, you know, the janitor definitely explains what the hell happened to the city and, you know, everything before that. They, they make it ext- they make it extensively longer. You know, they cut out a lot of the stuff around that area, which, you know, was some of the best parts of disturbing behavior as far as the movie was concerned. But, you know, I watched it, and as I was watching it and I was getting through it, it dawned on me, hey, wait, this movie was part and parcel of the 1990s horror craze that was, you know, packaged with, you know, Scream as far as movies were concerned, and it was part of the whole, you know, 90s teenage horror films, and, you know, one of the reasons why you still remember it and still like it is that it links you back to the 1990s, but it was one of the only films that came out of that, that scene that you actually ended up liking. And you only checked it out because it had Katie Holmes in it. And that was back before you started to, you know, kind of turn your back on her after the cruise marriage and everything. Like, yeah, because that, that's all part of my history. I used to really like her. And then she got married to Cruise, and it was like Scientology, uh, you know, sort of reaction to what was going on. And I, I kind of turned and stopped following what she was doing, you know. And then eventually I started to get interested in Jenna Malone and her work. It started following most of her filmography, which I haven't checked in with for a while. But, you know, I look back to childhood, and I realizing that I, you know, like, I'm blown away when I think back. Because I used to, like, really be into Aliens and, like, the X-Files and stuff. Which I remember going over to my, my friend's house across the street, and we watched Alien. And when I think back to what it was like watching Alien as like a like a seven year old kid, I mean the chef buster scene and everything as like a seven year old. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> you know, like all that's imprinted on my consciousness now, and I'm like, wow, man, I was hardcore as a kid. Like, whoa, Jesus, like, yeah, I, I sat through watching all of that. And it was traumatic to say the least to sit through watching it, and you know, it, it's been one shift like so like right now i'm watching 2001 a space odyssey which i've never seen but you know part of me is like you know i want to pick up on reference jokes a bit better and this one's you know loaded in its own references that people make allusions to especially in the hacker space i'm afraid i can't do that dave (laughs) you know so i i i want to get better at that and so watching a lot of the imdb you know 500 top movies and such is a great idea but i don't know if this is even on the imdb i just know that 2001's a space odyssey gets reference jokes made about it a lot so i'm i'm watching the whole the whole film um yeah i like learning about computers a lot like you know i've been bettering myself and on a growth journey i guess you could say like i'm not a linux expert you know I, I know more. I've been using Linux for long enough, though, to know my way around the Bash shell. Have just recently learned how to pipe commands, and you know, I, I look at it and I'm like, I'm glad I run a box at least that runs it because you know, like I look at it and I look at the commands that you've got in the command line, and I'm like, wow. I mean, I can see that most people who are developers probably prefer this particular operating system and why they would prefer it over developing for Windows, but if they want to make, you know, money, they learn how to develop for Windows, you know, like that, that's the reality of the thing. Like it's a much better operating system if you know how to write code than Windows actually turns out to be. And Windows is very flawed as far as an operating system is concerned because 
I mean, I look at it, and I look at like one of the reasons why I hate Windows, and, and, and I look at it, I was having this discussion with my partner. I was like, yeah, PowerShell exists on Windows, but is PowerShell essential to the operation of how to use Windows? No, because my partner's having issues, and she's had, having to use the system file checker, checker with scan now after some stuff to find, you know, errors in her computer, you know, and she was coming to me for tech support, and so she's finding corrupted files with that particular utility, and, you know, we're having this discussion, and I'm like, I, you know, I hate Windows. Like, I've come to the realization that, you know, I wish that we did more on the command prompt, you know, in Windows than we actually do, you know, and, and that, this is coming from back from Linux, and, you know, I get people that it drives me crazy in the Linux support communities how people will come in and be like, I hate the command line. You know, you Linux elitists need to learn that not everybody needs to know how to, needs to let, you know, be the command line should not be so essential. You need to figure out a way to do more things by GUI, blah, 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 you know, coming out of their mouths and, mouth and it's like, you know, it's maybe like an hour long investment of your time. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of educational content. You can spend like maybe two hours studying how exactly to use the command prompt and then you know you're done you don't really need to and then i mean i i sure you'll you'll learn new commands over time and and you can use the man pages to find the commands and what you're doing with them and, and learn about them you know compared to what you would otherwise know with it when it comes to the operating system i mean it's not something that you learn it you learn about overnight so like i learned about how to restore how to use dash dash restore on hashcat recently and i'm like you know, I'm thinking to myself, like, somebody could, like, do the same thing via the command line, via a, a graphical user interface, I mean, and, and, but see, if it was done via a graphical user interface, there would be a restore file stored somewhere on the hard drive, and you would have to open the program up, and then you'd have to go into, you'd have to go in and find the restore, you know, where wherever they programmed restore to things, load that, then, you know, go and navigate and it wouldn't be pointed at the at the at the right directory when you opened up you know the navigation box to go track down where the fuck where the fuck it actually restored the damn but you stored the damn you know restore file for hashcat whereas with with hashcat all you have to do is type in hashcat dash dash restore and you know sometimes maybe it's you know if you gave it a session id you, you don't have you know when you when you set it up you'd have to use the session ID with the command, but if you didn't use one, all you have to do is go to restore. Like the process that I'm running with it is like 20, nearing 20% 20 complete now. It's got 200 more days left to, to, to run through. I mean, yeah, it's a lot, but try running that on Windows. I mean, like in 200 days, fuck yeah, I'd have to reset my Windows operating system. And if I didn't, it would force fucking reset the damn thing on me for a Windows update at some point. You know, like it just wouldn't tolerate you know, going 200 days without an actual, without an actual reboot. Whereas with, with, with Linux, like it updates when you want it to update, you know, you, you don't have to update anything until you absolutely want to update, you know, your system, you know, with, you know, where it's just pseudo app get update and then pseudo app get, you, you, you know, full upgrade. And, and that's all you have to do. It's the only thing that you have to do endure when it comes to system updates and, and everything, when it comes to, you know, using, using Linux and it's just, it's so refreshing compared to using windows in the same, in the same capacity. So it's, it's great. It's great in that way. And, um, you know, so yeah, my system's having errors. That's why you're seeing me look off to the side there driving me a bit crazy but yeah it's, it's it's great you know that you can you can do that kind of stuff with linux and you know you can't do that with windows because it just you know it, it forces itself to you know go through updates and even on linux you can update you know for the most part and update your system without having to suffer a reboot through the process including the kernel which is you know incredibly impressive to say the least and, and you know i've learned enough to know that linus is the primary developer of the kernel you know that that's primarily what he does is that he adds more and more support for a greater and greater and greater range of hardware you know to the linux operating system you know like the linux kernel he's the one that's the primary you know that that's his portion of it and most of the other stuff is done by other people and you know about rms being the primary developer of gcc 
and you know the head the head over there at GCCD for the development of that particular compiler, which is great to know. It's it's great pieces of knowledge to know exactly who's responsible for which portion of things. But yeah, I'm I'm as my knowledge is growing, like I'm realizing that I'm on a growth path and I'm trying to learn. You know, like I realize that I'm not there yet, but you know, I'm a I'm trying to become more knowledgeable about computers. Like I'm putting in effort, you know, to grow in this area, you know, rather than just stagnating and being lazy. And, and, you know, I'm realizing that I love learning. Like I I'm realizing I'm trying to remember my love of it that I, I had forgotten, you know, before, but every little bit and bit and piece and knowledge that I gain about how to do things, it's just such a refreshing thing. It's like, look at me, I'm growing finally. <laughs> In my knowledge, and it's exciting. I'm excited about it. I'm genuinely fired up about learning Linux and everything, and and it's it's great. So I'm watching 2001: A Space Odyssey as well. I'm I'm watching it on my on my Windows box to to shoot the breeze after having learned a few things in the past day, the past couple of days, you know. And and I I I I do have this little project that I really want to do, which is as an idea, which is to you know work my way through the IMDb you know, list of the, the top movies because simply simply because of the fact that people make reference jokes all the time and because of the fact that I haven't seen so many of these these films that are actually on the list because I'm not I'm not that much of a cinephile. Like it's not my thing. I think that, that movies have kind of sucked for most of my adult life and so I haven't been hugely into it. I've been more of a TV file who watches television a lot, you know, when it comes to the content that I watch. And <laughs> So that, that that division exists between the two of us, and so I don't pick up, you know, or, or maybe books. Maybe I read more than the rest of you. So you know, I might I might pick up on something like with the Mist series, as far as the series 